Hello class, I am Professor Dwight Hughes with the Clark College Network Technology Department and today we're going to be lecturing on quality of service that's chapter 6 in the Intech 224 Connecting Networks course. We've got two sections to look at. We'll overview what QoS is and we'll look at the uh, variety of QoS mechanisms uh, that can be implemented. An overview of quality of service. Simply put, quality of service is about prioritizing traffic. It's queuing, in other words. It's a way to take um, traffic that comes into an interface and move it around, right? So the traffic is packets, and we can move those around into a new order to give some of them a higher priority. And there's various ways we can do that. They're showing one here. Uh, this is called weighted fair queue. They're illustrating here where they um, provide everyone access to the link, but in different quantities, right? So uh, a high priority would get more use of the link more often than a medium priority or a low priority, but everyone gets to use the link. So that's one example of prioritizing traffic. Whenever you prioritize, remember you are also deprioritizing. It's impossible to make everything a priority, so by its very nature, if you're prioritizing something, you're doing that over something else. Typically, uh, QoS is a mechanism that's used when we have congestion. So it is a um, way to manage the bandwidth on the network at times of high congestion when we're using 100% of our available bandwidth. It can help deal with some transmission quality issues around um, not having enough bandwidth. In other words, running out, hitting the full 100% bandwidth utilization which generates congestion, just like on a road system, like a freeway, as soon as it gets congested, it really backs up badly and the delay times get, they get long fast. Um, and that creates what we call jitter, which jitter is unpredictable delay. So uh, we have a mechanism in voice and video called buffering, which helps accommodate for small amounts of jitter, which is the unpredictability in the interval arrivals between packets. But uh, jitter can uh, basically destroy your voice and video quality very quickly. Okay, and of course, packet loss. A lot of packets are uh, using time to live values and the applications are only gonna wait so long for those packets to get to the other side, especially when we talk about video and voice, other real-time traffic is simply uh, no longer usable after a certain short period of time goes by. So in a properly designed network with quality of service mechanisms in place, we can prioritize these types of traffic over others that may be more delay tolerant, such as email or file transfer. Before we get started, we want to really understand our network. We need to know the company and the applications and the topology of the network. So we have to understand what type of traffic is flowing. And we can use software like Wireshark to help us determine this. We need to know how much video, how much voice, what's the you know, composition of the traffic on this network. And we need that before we start prioritizing. So we can kind of make a list of what mission critical uh, protocols we have, what ones are delay tolerant and what ones are not. And uh, obviously voice is something we always like to uh, prioritize. Another thing that hardly gets mentioned is routing table updates. That's another protocol to really prioritize so that your routers can be very quick at realizing changes in network topology. So those are uh, two examples of things we want to prioritize because they're delay intolerant. Okay. If we look at data, data is not loss tolerant. So that's what that's saying there. Data is generally delay tolerant, meaning that Data is sent in a very bursty nature. It can be queued up and then sent in a, a, in a whole bunch. And so it doesn't have to be sent at a, at a kind of a cadence, a continuous flow like video and voice. Video and voice actually can um, sustain some loss. So it's okay to lose some of the video and voice traffic. That's not a big deal because um, the human that is consuming that is unaware of small losses in the stream of video or voice. But what they are aware of is delay. So video and voice are delay intolerant. Data, on the other hand, you can't lose any of the data. You want every word in your email, every word in your Word document to get through, but uh, the timing of it, of it coming, if it was a few seconds later or earlier, it really doesn't matter. 
Typically, an interface is going to use what we call FIFO or first in, first out buffering. And so when packets arrive on an interface, they line up in a first come, first serve basis. And the first packet to get in line is the next one to go out the interface and so on. And so this is the fastest, most effective way of queuing when you have enough bandwidth. So if we don't have bandwidth congestion, we want to use FIFO buffering. Once we get congestion, then we want to start using QoS mechanisms. One of them, as I mentioned in an earlier slide, is called weighted fair queue. This is a default and standard one applied to your serial interfaces on the Cisco router right now. And weighted fair queue will uh, prioritize different classes of data into different queues. Um, the low priority queue is always called other. It's basically everything else. And uh, you can prioritize things up or down. You can actually create up to 14 queues with weighted fair queue. And you can give weights to them. And that weight is essentially the percentage of the bandwidth that that queue is allowed to consume. So for instance, you could give voice 50%, which means one out of two packets traveling down the interface at times of congestion could, will be voice, right? So you could uh, ensure that you have uh, that get through. What's important with all queuing again is that whatever you prioritize is the minimum of your traffic. If you prioritize everything, it's not going to work. You only have a certain amount of bandwidth and if your priority queue exceeds that bandwidth, then nothing works, right? So we want to make sure that our priority queues are um, a percentage of the bandwidth that is less than 100%. There's what's called class-based weighted fair queue which extends standard fair queue with um, some user-defined uh, traffic classes. So you can assign bandwidth, weight, or maximum packet limits to these classes, and those classes then have specific criteria that you have selected as the admin to control uh, the um, traffic. We have low latency queuing, which is um, uh, a low, uh, designed for voice and video, LLQ. So you might choose LLQ. There's five or six of these, right? So, you know, we're, we're not going to delve into them too deeply. We're just kind of giving you a tour of the different kind of ways that you might set up quality of service. So LLQ is another way where you have notice a priority queue that takes precedence over the um, weighted fair queues. So it's kind of combines uh, priority queuing that we didn't really talk about previously, but in priority queuing, one queue um, takes priority over the others. And, and the drawback, of course, is if the priority queue is most of the traffic, it's going to starve the others and they're never going to get any traffic through. So LLQ is a mixture of that with uh, CB weighted fair queue so that you can define weighted classes so everybody gets some kind of fair usage, a percentage of the bandwidth that they can use for their type of traffic, but you still have a priority queue that trumps everything else. Kind of think of it like the ambulance queue, right? Whenever an ambulance comes by, everybody's supposed to pull over and they get the right of way, no matter you know who else is uh, who else is traveling the roadway. So that would be your priority queue. You just want to make sure those ambulances are infrequent. Let's look at QoS mechanisms. Okay, so there's different models. We have the best effort model. It's not really QoS. So best effort is the way we normally send things. We, everything you know lines up, FIFO buffer. We make a best effort. The router's trying to get everything across. It's best effort delivery. That's how the postal system handles your mail. They treat it like everyone else's mail. There's integrated services, which gives a high level of quality service and guarantees that service across the um, network. So for this to work, you have to reserve specific amounts of bandwidth for types of traffic. So this can really limit your network because it's like a carpool lane that's just sitting there, maybe underutilized, but it can't be utilized by other traffic usually because it is reserved to handle that quality of service. So um, that's called integrated services. There's also differentiated services, which is kind of a mix of so differentiated services is allows you to give different levels of, of quality to different types of traffic. And that's what we talk about most are differentiated services. But integrated services would be your highest level of, of quality if you, if you need that. And then best effort is the 
um, standard type of uh, quality of service that everyone gets, which is basically not quality of service. Okay. And this is just going to describe them. There's best effort described. Pretty much know that one. That's how it's um, being operated so far. Quality of service models. Here's all about integrated services. Again, you have to control the network from um, source to destination. So for integrated services to work, you have to actually be able to control the quality of service across all devices from source to destination. Because you have to maintain that quality of service promise, that allocated bandwidth across your network. Differentiated services. So it's similar to the prior one. It's designed so that you can create different levels of, of quality of service, right? So it's almost guaranteed while still being cost effective and scalable. So that's the idea here is that it's not as rigid as, as the prior one. It's, it's got more flexibility in allowing different traffic to go across the network or share the bandwidth um, by varying the quality of service requirements for different types of traffic. So it allows you to mix your traffic and get uh, different types. And again, this is the type that most companies are going to be interested in using. Okay. We're going to try to avoid packet loss. So we're going to use different tools, classification and marking tools. So this is a way to identify a, a flow of packets. And so if we can mark a flow, we can keep those packets um, moving along. So it's not just looking at each packet individually. What we do is, well, what the QoS tools do, is they try to identify TCP flows. So um, those are the sequence numbers. So that they can give a quality of service to a flow of packets, not just this packet, that packet. So think of instead of just digging in a bag of mail and pulling out individual mail items, individual packets, and classifying those and sending them, um, this is more advanced. It's looking at the flow. It's saying, oh, this piece of mail relates to the one I sent previously, and they get classified the same and sent the same. So uh, also congestion avoidance tools. We try to avoid congestion by doing things like load balancing and... Um, you know, of course, uh, we're doing this on a conversation by conversation basis, try those flows, trying to keep flows together. So these are some of the tools, classification and marking, COS, TID, XP, IPP. So you see those listed there. So these are, all these are fields in a header and these fields in the header allow you to identify different levels of quality of service. So it's just a number that you put in there. And then that marking number so that that uh, traffic can be marked, uh, say, by the computer that creates the traffic or by a switcher router. And once it's marked, notice the layer two and the layer three, because some can be marked by layer two devices in the frame. Then that marking allows it to quickly be put in the right queue. So this uh, um, basically allows one device to dig in and figure out what type of traffic it is and then mark it. And then it stays marked through the network so that it, each router doesn't have to dig in and see is this voice, is this video, is this just an email. It can rely on the number that's been assigned to it, the classification number. So you can see where these fall in, the uh, QoS fields that are inserted into an Ethernet frame, for instance, versus uh, layer three marking, which is part of the uh, layer three packet. Okay, we have what's called the trust boundary. And so the trust boundary is who we should trust to make these markings, right? So that isn't always the end device, right? Like a PC, if we're just letting the PCs mark their own traffic, they'll probably mark everything high priority. I know I would, right? So we're probably not gonna trust the end devices to correctly mark their own traffic. So we are probably gonna to wanna to have a device under our control, which is the trust boundary, meaning anything beyond that is not trusted and we're gonna reevaluate it and remark it. So even if they're classified coming in to the trust boundary, that device at the edge of the trust boundary is going to do the classification markings. 
Okay, and so that's just where if it's administratively feasible to control the traffic and, and do that marking. Okay, of course, congestion avoidance, uh, we need to set thresholds for congestion, like what is congested? And that's what I mean by uh, thresholds. I mean, obviously 100% of utilization is, is congested, but how about 80% or 85? I mean, at what point do you implement Q QoS mechanisms to avoid congestion? Because those uh, mechanisms, remember, add delay and complexity to your traffic. So when you're not congested, you might want to use FIFO buffering. So you'll have to identify minimum and maximum thresholds. So you say, okay, when we reach 85% bandwidth utilization, we implement PQ QoS mechanisms, all right? Priority queuing. And then when we get back down to 80%, then we go back to FIFO, right? So you have to set these uh, thresholds so that the router knows when to turn on and off the QoS mechanisms. Shaping and policing. So traffic shaping is that idea of queuing and scheduling um, traffic. For, um, for transmission. So you can uh, delay traffic and send it at other times. So you could have delayed queues for types of traffic that are delay tolerant, because remember most traffic is very bursty. So as long as you're not uh, constantly at 100%, you should be peaking 100%, dropping back down to 50, 70, 80%, up and down, kind of like the stock market. And you will have these gaps that you can put in as your bandwidth utilization drops that you can put in the more delay tolerant traffic and basically start sending that, which brings your utilization back up, but kind of levels everything out. It kind of flattens out the, uh, uh, the line of bandwidth utilization. And you can actually buy little boxes that do this for you. Thank you.